The next guest is Suresh Chavria, who taught political science at St. Xavier's College, Mumbai, before joining the Film and Television Institute of India, Pune, as professor of film appreciation. He was director of the National Film Archive of India, during which period he initiated several restorations and programming events showcasing Indian film heritage. He's published several articles uh, on cinema and a book, Light of Asia, Indian Silent Cinema, 1912 to 1934, which is a core reference on the subject. Associated with the Film Society movement for more than four decades, Dr. Chabria is best known as a teacher and his short courses and workshops on film appreciation are much sought after. He is on the Advisory Committee of National Museum of Indian Cinema and the Advisory Board of the Public Service Broadcasting Trust. Semi-retired, Professor Chabria continues working as a film historian and a teacher, and his other interests are painting, photography, and Far Eastern poetry. His presentation today is Trist with Destiny, Democracy in Recent Indian Cinema. Can we please welcome uh, Sir Chabria? Whoops. Thank you, Paul. I wonder if um, this phrase, Trist with Destiny, which is the title of my talk, is familiar to anyone here. Um, it is the equivalent of the say, uh, Gettysburg speech of Abraham Lincoln in the United States, or the blood, sweat, and tears on the beaches of Dover of Winston Churchill. It was the speech which our first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, made to the Constituent Assembly on August 15, 1947, when India became independent from British rule. I will quote part of that speech in due course. Before that, I would like to say something about the kind of persons who were sitting in the Constituent Assembly of India in 1947. They were a generation who had been truly gifted with humanist values. More than 100 years preceding um, 1947, a liberal English-based, English medium-based language had been introduced in India. Indian intellectuals knew about James Mill and John Bentham and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Um, well, perhaps the, uh, uniquely in Asia, uh, we had a very advanced uh, middle class and free press, and, and it was in the, operating in the colonial era, uh, but you could get away with a lot, especially when the British censors didn't follow your language. And India has many languages. So Nehru belonged Jawaharlal Nehru, like Vallabhai Patel, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, uh, he belonged to a generation which had got its values from this kind of liberal, humanist, even socialistic um, education. The big question in India is that these values are under threat. A lot is said about Islamic radicalism, the rise of neo-fascism, and so on. Not enough is known about the rise of Hindu nationalism in India. It is not talked about as much. In a way, it's because perhaps it doesn't explode in your face, like Syria, or ISIS, um, or um, neo-fascist marches in, in Dresden, or, or Charlottesville, or somewhere. It doesn't explode in, in, in that kind of way uh, uh, until recently. But the agenda of the Hindu nationalists since the pre-independence period, I'm going, so going back to 100 years, has been not to create a liberal democratic state in India, but to create a Hindu Rashtra, a Hindu nation, um, which has some very odd ideas about history which has some very fantastic ideas about um, uh, uh, what constitutes being an Indian and, 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 and not. The, the most insulting thing nowadays on the streets of Bombay, and even it has happened in some legislative councils, not yet in our national parliament, 
um, someone who you don't agree with, you say, go back, go to Pakistan. You know, you are the other. Go to Pakistan. You not, don't belong here. So this is the very, very disturbing thing happening in India. And what disturbs me most, I have, I'm along with Howard, perhaps the senior most person here, is that I had believe a golden age has been lost. Uh, a golden age, how did it get undermined? How did this edifice co collapse? I sometimes blame, well, education. It's the failure of education. Sometimes I blame the social media and television. Sometimes I blame myself <laughs> for not having had the greater courage during my lifetime in a way to speak up more against uh, the forces that were cleverly working themselves into our national life. I'll come back to that. I do bear with me and I will quote the opening and the closing paras of Jawaharlal Nehru's speech. You can Google it and, and, and look it up. I think it's, it's one of the great humanist speeches uh, that one can come across. So this is uh, Midnight. You have heard of Salman Rushdie's book, um, Midnight's Children, uh, a very major English novel uh, by, by an author who is from Bombay like myself. Midnight's Children means the children who were born on the stroke of freedom when Nehru was making this, this speech. The speech starts this way. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A moment comes, which comes but rarely in history, when we step out from the old to the new, when an age ends, and when the soul of a nation long suppressed finds utterance. Here is the optimism of, of an anti-colonial humanist freedom fighter. The freedom movement, the freedom, uh, achievement of freedom was also accompanied by the partition of the country into Pakistan and, and India, which, is, uh, which I will come back to at, at some point. This is uh, the scar, this is the, um, uh, Glow, seismic fault, really, of Indian uh, history. Uh, the division of the country into majority Muslim population and majority Hindu population. Uh, he, uh, he, has, uh, uh, he enfolds the vision that he has of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, and he ends by saying that ultimately our responsibility as members of the Constituent Assembly who were uh, elected majority of them, only a few nominated by the Viceroy, the Governor General of India, the British government, they were elected. He says that our agenda is to build up a prosperous, democratic and progressive nation and to create social, economic and political institutions which will ensure justice and fullness of life of every man and woman. This is the Declaration of Rights, this is the American Fundamental Rights Declaration, this is derived from Bejhot and the British law, it is, it is also the liberty, equality, fraternity of France. These are the values which uh, inspired the freedom movement in, in India. Now I was born, I'm not a midnight child, I was born two years after in independence. And the problems that we are facing now, I have been familiar since I was in half pants. Everything that we talk about in India has a ring of something that has happened before. Our large population, our poverty, our um, uh, you know, caste, uh, we are a caste-based society. Inequality is deeply inbuilt into our DNA. People consider themselves of superior castes and lower castes. We have been sectarian 
we have been divided on religious lines and, and so on. Every time I am part of a discussion like that, I feel that I had took, took part in this discussion also 50, 40 or 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. What is new now is that um, we had this phenomenal economic boom about 15 or 20 years ago, uh, powered by our phenomenal um, uh, education system. For, uh, the higher education is pretty, pretty good in India. And many of our uh, graduates also have been abroad and come back. They have founded uh, in, you know, the, the IT industry. They are great at, at management of all kinds. They're doing very well in America. They're doing very well wherever, wherever they, they go. We had this great boom. And consumerism and um, uh, you know, an urban growth and the rise of a half a billion strong middle class has come about. And this middle class is linked with this, by this, a phone on which you uh, get all your information, you get connected to every social media, and you begin to stop listening and uh, even thinking about any issue except what comes through this phone. Everyone. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. This is, this is really, really a phenomenon in, in India. And a few groups knew, know how to target such a population. It's not just Zuckerberg and, and um, whatever, whatever the names are of uh, these multinational uh, groupings. Political groups, shrewd, with shrewd consultants know how to target you. And our internet and social media are flooded with fundamentalist Hindu messaging. And our prime minister, who, who looks very decent and, and a, an upright person, was, well, uh, was a, a RSS man. Uh, this is the fundamentalist Hindu organization. And is, his ultimate boss is, uh, uh, is someone in Nagpur, not, not in uh, the president of India or the people of India. His ultimate boss is something else. Now, our prime minister and his party have been able to dress themselves in, in the garb of democracy because they are elected, they knew how to win the elections, they were backed by corporate and capitalist uh, sector completely, and they knew how to play on the religious sentiments of people. And uh, they are beginning to take over all the liberal institutions, uh, the institutions I belong to, the Film and Television Institute of India, for example, is no longer a free artistic environment anymore. It's become vitiated by right-wing ideology. Is it, a, it's, it's an abuse of freedom of speech rather than freedom of speech that happens when such um, a, neo, a neo-fascist um, uh, thing happens. So where do I blame all this? I tend to think somewhere the responsibility is with global capitalism, definitely the kind of economic model that was created in the 19th and early 20th century uh, on absorption of resources and people's labor to convert it into wealth. Uh, somewhere something has wrong, gone wrong with this model. I'm, I'm not a crypto socialist or or, um, or a communist or anything like that. Something has gone wrong with this model and its motor and its drive um, is destroying A, the planet, and B, our minds completely. And all the great values that I think uh, make us human are under, are under threat. Now, uh, maybe that's uh, not, not mostly known things to you. I'll show you two uh, clips two trailers from recent films um, which have been fairly successful in India. Um, uh, the first one is Coat and the second one is Newton. 
uh, you know, uh, Indian mainstream films, um, uh, which are called Bollywood, by the way, uh, 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 of, of as big uh, a phenomenon as any in the world, uh, like Hollywood and, and uh, East Asian cinemas, uh, it's, it, it de deals with uh, these questions, but in a very simplistic way, the questions these two films talk about. Uh, but uh, these are done sensitively. Here the filmmaker has taken the position, so to speak, of the honest, true, liberal journalist, which is becoming more and more a thing of the past. If you speak your mind and if you speak the truth in most parts of the world, there's no exception in India, you are trolled. You, you often find yourself in actual physical danger. Okay? So, uh, Theo tells me there are only four minutes left. So these will take four minutes to see, and I will just make a few roundup comments, and then we'll t take over. Uh, we'll leave the rest for the discussion. So first, we'll see the trailer of Court. Court. This is a Marathi film um, uh, about uh, Narayan Kamble ki arrest ke baare judicial mein system. Aap bata sakte ki kin charges pe arrest kiya hai Abatement of suicide. किसने सुसाइड किया? ये सितला देवी झोपड़ पट्टी है ना? हम्म उधर एक आदमी ने किया। अरे रान 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 चला उठो सारे रान रे। The accused Narayan Kamre, age 65, charged under Indian Penal Code, section 306. Abatement of suicide in the death of Vasudev Pawar, age 25, who was a worker under contract with the Bruhan Mumbai Municipal Corporation. The deceased person committed suicide on the night of 24th August 2012 by choking himself to death inside a sewer located at Ram Villas Road, Andheri East. The police, after its thorough investigation, concluded in its report that it was a clear case of suicide. अरे पोलले 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 हाथ चाना विस्तवाचे दान रे दान 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 दा� आसा कुटल गाना तुम्हीं आदि लीला है का? अजून तेरी नहीं। मंजे आसा गाना तुम्हीं लियू शकाल। तुम चाह हरकत नहीं आसा गाना लिया। नहीं। ये चक्कर चक्कर चाउंडर है। भाई ना ना। ये चंगल मंगल है। भाई ना ना। ये चुगल छाल नहीं। भाई ना ना। ये पंगे मॉल नहीं। भाई ना ना। ये फॉरो हॉल नहीं। We'll see one more trailer. This is in lieu of a long extract from these films. Newton. This film is actually a festival. Ji, mujhe picture dekhna bahut pasand hai. कौन सी फेवरेट सी साजन चले ससुराल क्या उम्र है आपकी जी साढ़े सोलह साल नाबालिग हैं तुम्हारी प्रॉब्लम क्या है न्यूटन मालूम है तुमको मेरी ईमानदारी ना सॉरी दिस डेसेंट सीम टू हैव सब्टाइटल ईमानदारी का घमंड अपनी ही ड्यूटी करने के लिए तुम चाहते हो लोग तुम्हें थैंक्स बोले ये डंड करने हैं। माओवाद इन्फ्लुएंस काफी हैवी है। पुल सिक्योरिटी मिलेगी। अगर पोलिंग बूथ पे माओवादियों ने हमला कर दिया तो उस पोलिंग बूथ के इलेक्शन को हम रद्द कर देंगे और दोबारा वहाँ री इलेक्शन करवाएंगे। पिछले इलेक्शन में उन्नीस लोग मारे गए थे। यहाँ तो मतदान केंद्र आज कई सालों बाद मैं ये कलेक्ट ऑफिस में सबमिट कर देता हूँ। 
क्रिकेट खेलते थे बचपन में बैट्समैन या बॉलर एम्पायर लगा मुझे पकड़िए भारी है ना ये देश का भार है और हमारे कंधे पे है गाँव में जाके सबको बोल दे वोटिंग हो रही है आ जाए ऐसे ऐसे नहीं होता है वोटिंग के कुछ रूल्स होते हैं तो जी ये ये अंदर रखिए इलेक्शन बूथ में तो ताज खेलने की पुरानी परंपरा है डिपार्टमेंट में सस्पेंड होने की भी पुरानी परंपरा है उधर गार्ड वाले वोटिंग मशीन एक खिलौने जैसा है जो पसंद आए अच्छा लगे वो बटन दबा दो अरे क्या बकवास कर रहे हैं आप एक खिलौना नहीं है वोटिंग मशीन आप चुप रहिए इलेक्शन नहीं है ऐसे किसी को भी वोट दे दो सर कोई भी बड़ा काम एक दिन में नहीं होता सालों लग जाते हैं जंगल बंदे मेरे से पहले बहुत पहले भी एक न्यूटन था पढ़ाई करते वक्त कभी उसकी बात समझ नहीं आई पर अब काम करते वक्त आ रही है कि जब तक कुछ नहीं बदलोगे ना दोस्त कुछ नहीं बदलेगा एक बात बताओ ये नाम किसने रखा था मैंने रखा क्यों सर माँ बाप ने नूतन कुमार नाम रखा था तो सब लोग बहुत मजाक उड़ाते थे <laughs> तो मैंने टेंथ के फॉर्म पे नू का न्यू कर दिया और तन का टन या या ओके सो द द फर्स्ट ट्रेलर वी सॉ वॉज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द फिल्म इज द स्टोरी ऑफ द फिल्म इज दिस बियर्डेड मैन द वाइट बियर्डेड मैन ही इज अ दलित पोएट ही इज अ प्रोटेस्ट पोएट बिलोंगिंग टू द लोअर कास्ट and he is telling the lower caste people in his songs he's a poet singer he's a bard he's telling people to give up this way of life of being subservient to the upper caste so uh, in in the film there's an incident in which a, um, a manual scavenger someone who works cleaning uh, the sewage system uh, suffocates to death Uh, he, 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 no, no, he not suffocates to death. That's the uh, uh, alleged song uh, he's supposed to have written. He uh, he kills himself. He commits suicide, and someone interprets a lyric of his that it it was that hearing that song that inspired that worker, that sewage worker, to kill himself. So he's accused of abetment of suicide, inspiring him to. to kill himself but the point of the film is uh, the a long judicial process goes on through most of the film the arguments on both sides there's a liberal uh, and uh, just point of view and there is a very lame bureaucratic point of view the film ends in a in a chilling way we forget the trial is shut and it will be the decision will be made 3 months later after the winter re- recess we follow the judge on his holidays he's, he le- he leaves with his family on a holiday and he shows himself to be the most insensitive person around who's advising people to follow superstitious practice who's who's got none of the values which a judge should have so that's that's it the second story we didn't have the subtitles and we don't have the time now but that's about a young officer who wants um civil servant who wants to make a difference to society is optimistic and so on Obviously, and uh, he has to do he has to do election duty in a in a uh, in a guerrilla infested area uh, the maoists naxals we call them in india uh, a, a quarter of india the tribal part of india is affected by uh, tr- uh, this kind of insurgency and he tries to make sure that the votes are cast and 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 so on do so, do see this film it's it's showing day after tomorrow newton it's a very good film okay um i'm s- sorry i have taken a little more time than allotted maybe in the question and answer session we can add or, or subtract whatever you want okay thanks <laughs>